The next issue is whether Jammu and Kashmir retained an element of sovereignty or internal sovereignty when it joined the Union of India. We have held that the state of Jammu and Kashmir did not retain an element of sovereignty when it joined the Union of India. We have arrived at this conclusion for the following reasons. First, paragraph 8 of the instrument of accession executed by Maharaja Hari Singh provided that nothing in the instrument would affect the continuance of the sovereignty of the Maharaja in and over the state. Second, on 25 November 1949, a proclamation was issued for the state of Jammu and Kashmir by Yuvraj Karan Singh. The declaration in this proclamation that the constitution of India would not only supersede all other constitutional provisions in the state, which were inconsistent with it, but also abrogate them, achieves what would have been attained by an agreement of merger. With the issuance of the proclamation, paragraph 8 of the instrument of accession ceased to be of legal consequence. The proclamation reflects the full and final surrender of sovereignty by Jammu and Kashmir through its sovereign ruler to India, to her people who are sovereign. Third, neither the constitutional setup nor any other factors indicate that the state of Jammu and Kashmir retained an element of sovereignty. The constitution of Jammu and Kashmir was only to further define the relationship between the Union of India and the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The relationship was already defined by the instrument of accession. The proclamation by Yuvraj Karan Singh in November 1949, and more importantly, by the Constitution of India. Fourth, there is a clear absence in the Constitution of Jammu and Kashmir of a reference to sovereignty. In contrast, the Constitution of India emphasizes in its preamble that the people of India resolve to constitute themselves or to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. Fifth, that the state of Jammu and Kashmir became, became an integral part of the Union of India is evident from Articles 1 and 370 of the Indian Constitution. It is reiterated, it is reiterated in Section 3 of the Constitution of Jammu and Kashmir, which is unamendable. Sixth, the preamble of the Constitution of Jammu and Kashmir Sections 3, 5, and 147 of the State Constitution, coupled with Article 1 of the Constitution of India, read with the first schedule, as well as Article 370, indicate in no uncertain terms that a system of subordination, as, unstitute, as understood by the definition of sovereignty, exists by which the state is subordinate to the Indian Constitution first and only then to its own Constitution. Seventh, all states in the country have legislative and executive power, albeit to differing degrees. The constitution accommodates concerns specific to a particular state by providing for arrangements which are specific to that state. Articles 371A to 371J are examples of special arrangements for different states. This is a feature of asymmetric federalism, like Article 370, which became applicable to Jammu and Kashmir on the adoption of the constitution. The state of Jammu and Kashmir does not have internal sovereignty which is distinguishable from the powers and privileges enjoyed by other states in the country. And eighth, the limited question before the constitution bench in its decision in Premnath Kaul was whether the monarch held plenary legislative powers after the constitution of India as it applied to Jammu and Kashmir was adopted in the state but before the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir was adopted. A decision is an authority for the proposition which it decides. The question whether the state of Jammu and Kashmir retained sovereignty upon integration with the dominion of India did not arise in that case. The next issue which we have addressed is the challenge to constitutional order 273, CO 273. To answer this issue, we had to decide on two issues. One whether Article 370 is a temporary provision, and two, the effect of the dissolution of the Constituent Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir on the scope of powers under Clause 3 of Article 370. We have held that Article 370 is a temporary provision on a reading of the historical context in which it was included. Article 370 was introduced to serve two purposes. First, 
the transitional purpose to provide for an interim arrangement until the constituent assembly of the state was formed and could take a decision on the legislative competence of the union on matters other than the ones stipulated in the instrument of accession and ratify the constitution and second a temporary purpose an interim arrangement in view of the special circumstances because of the war conditions in the state c we have held that a textual reading of article 370 also indicates that it is a temporary provision for this purpose we have referred to the placement of the provision in part 21 of the constitution which deals with temporary and transitional provisions the marginal note to the provision which states temporary provisions in respect to the state of jammu and kashmir and a reading of articles 370 and 1 by which the state became an integral part of india upon the adoption of the constitution d on the second question of the effect of the dissolution of the constituent assembly of jammu and kashmir on the scope of powers under clause 3 of article 370 we have held that the power of the president of india under article 370 clause 3 to issue a notification declaring that article 370 ceases to exist ceases to exist subsists even after the dissolution of the constituent assembly of jammu and kashmir for the following reasons first the proviso to article 373 that is clause 3 encapsulates the process by which the indian states could ratify the constitution of india the ruler of each indian state had to issue a proclamation ratifying the constitution on the recommendation of the constituent assembly where such body existed in states where the constituent assembly was not convened by then the ruler of the state had to issue a proclamation accepting the constitution when a constituent assembly was convened in those states the constituent assembly could make a recommendation for the modification of the constitution as it applied to the state and such a recommendation would be earnestly considered into inverted commas earnestly considered by the union the words recommendation of the constituent assembly referred to in clause 2 shall be necessary before the president issues a notification as it appears in the proviso to article 370 clause 3 and must be read in this context thus the recommendation of the constituent assembly to begin with was not binding on the president second at the time of the framing of the constitution of india it was obviously within the contemplation that the constituent assembly of jammu and kashmir was formed for framing the constitution for the state it was not intended to be a permanent body but a body with a specific remit and purpose the power conferred by the proviso to article 370 clause 3 was hence something which would operate in a period of transition when the constituent assembly of jammu and kashmir was formed and was in existence pending the drafting of the state constitution third when the constituent assembly of jammu and kashmir ceased to exist only one of the special circumstances for which the provision was introduced ceased. However, the other circumstances, that is the special circumstances because of the situation in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, for which Article 370 was introduced, subsisted even after, after the Constituent Assembly ceased to exist. This is recognized by the judgment of the Constitution Bench in Sampat Prakash. Fourth, the effect of the President declaring under Clause 3 of Article 370 that article 370 ceases to exist is that the provisions of the constitution which apply to every state in the first schedule would equally apply to the state of jammu and kashmir articles 371d and 370 bracket 3 were introduced with the purpose of enhancing constitutional integration and not for the disintegration so the power under article 371d and article 370 clause 3 even when exercised to its fullest extent, does not freeze the system of integration contemplated by Article 370, but is rather intended to enhance constitutional integration between the Union and the state of Jammu and Kashmir.